Welcome to everybody God has gathered up here in this place today. We give thanks for the journey that leads up to Lent and all that Jesus had to say to us about how to walk that journey together. And we're glad to have everybody joining us online by live streaming at this time as well. If you're finding our service online, please sign in to let us know you're with us today. We're very glad to have Logan Almeida as our worship host today. And we're glad to have members of the choir coming forward to lead our hymns this morning. We give thanks for the music of Kit Ullman coming to us from the balcony. She'll soon be down here with us. We're blessed by the ministry of our tech support crew in the balcony, as well as our ushers and greeters and worship manager, Steve Strassman. Please see any of them if you need help with something throughout the, the morning here. And we are going to begin with the opening song, Christ for the World We Sing. You'll find that on page 568. Let's stand so we can sing together. Join me in the call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. We come rejoicing and giving thanks. This is the day God invites us to love and to live. We seek to dwell in God's love as we turn our hearts toward God. This is the day to worship our Creator and Redeemer. We worship the God of life and love. Please join me in the opening prayer. Almighty God, we gather in this space to praise your name. Help us lay aside our worries, our fears, our frustrations, and our anxieties, that we may be truly worship you. The power of your spirit empower us to seek your ways, walk in the footsteps of Christ, come before you with our whole heart, and live as faithful servants. We seek your help this day, O oh God. The world may know your abundant love and your amazing grace. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Now please take the time to greet one another and offer the peace of Christ.
As the men choir, men's choir finds its way forward, they'll be singing, If My People Will Pray, preceding our prayer time today. Thank you so much to our men's choir for that message to all of us this morning. And now as we humble ourselves to pray together, we'll begin with the things we need to be joyful about and give thanks to the Lord for. Begin with a time of silent prayer for all those things that are yet unspoken on our hearts that we carry with us to this place. Let's begin with silent prayer so we can speak those things directly to God's ear. In the presence of one another and with our God, let us pray.
Creator God, we give thanks for your continued work on a creation that surrounds us and us who walk within it on the earth. Thank you for never giving up on any of us and continuing to invite us into a what's next. What's next as we follow your son? What's next as we live as your people in the world? What's next as we continue to open ourselves to the power of your transforming love that will shape, mold, and change us each and every day of our lives that we let you work within us? We give thanks for this opportunity to gather in your house today and to turn our hearts to you. Quiet our heads and hearts down enough that we listen for your voice speaking to us in the many ways that that comes, through the sounds of little ones in our midst, through the encouraging words we share between us, and within the thoughts that suddenly come to us that have no, no possible origin within us. Let us take those as your nudges for the journey of our lives and your guidance and direction that comes for all things. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to lift up our hearts to you in prayer and to name before you those persons who we're aware of that need your healing touch that need strength for the journey of letting loved ones go on to be with you, that need your comfort for the long journey of receiving treatment for illness and also asking you what's next for the journey of this earthly life. Thank you, God, for all the ways you walk with us, shape and mold us, and continue to invite us into becoming followers of your son, Jesus, our Christ. What a gift his presence in, in our lives is in all the ways he guides us and directs us. What a gift his words are when we find them in scripture. His loving spirit also taught us how to talk to you. We remember the words he gave us for that as we say together this day, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading will be Matthew 5, 21 through 26. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to counsel. And if you say you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you're on your way to court with them, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you'll be thrown in prison. Truly I tell you, you will never get out till you've paid the last penny. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, we know that the news that surrounds us and comes to us these days is full of volatile situations. And often those situations are the result of people getting angry and staying angry until their anger grew into an explosion with dreadful consequences. Innocent lives can be lost when someone grows so angry they decide to take the life of someone who hurt them, sometimes unintentional, unintentionally injuring innocent bystanders. 
Not all consequences of anger, though, are quite that extreme. There are degrees of anger we hear about in this scripture passage and begin to understand that even those actions of anger that don't take another's life are still of great concern to Jesus our Christ. I suspect most of us can think of at least one friend lost or a relationship in our lives that at some point was broken due to anger. And some of us have a lot more of those than one. That happens when we let our anger at someone become more important than the relationship with them. And sometimes our anger, if we hang on to it, even begins to affect who we are and how we walk in the world, spilling over into other relationships in our lives. But getting angry is a normal part of being a human being. We all get angry. Many times it's truly justified and we're angry about something that has scared us or someone who has endangered us or our loved ones. We want to be sure it's not repeated, that it doesn't happen again. But then what happens to us? Do we let our anger take over what's happening within us and build a wall in our relationship with someone? Do we stay angry and let that take over our lives? The concern is that getting stuck in anger generally begins to make us bitter and changes how we walk in the world, eventually exhausting us and keeping us from fully claiming the gifts God places in our lives all around us, the gift of companionship and the peace that comes from doing what God wants us to do. Jesus knew that we are fallible human beings and we'd need advice about anger. And Jesus came to walk among us on earth, fully divine and fully human, to have the full experience of human life. Thus, we have a few instances of Jesus himself being angry, often on behalf of others. That best known incident takes place when he confronts the money changers in the temple over the unjust system of purchasing sacrificial animals and he tips over the tables of the money changers and tells them to leave the temple. Getting angry is part of the human condition and even Christ our Lord experienced that. So here in this passage, we have Jesus' guidance for dealing with anger when it turns up in our hearts and minds and tries to take over our lives. In this passage, Jesus, Jesus refers to what was said by God as recorded in the Old Testament. And then he continues with, but I say to you, because his life and examples are the fulfillment of those Old Testament scriptures. Jesus was fine-tuning our understanding of what God meant in those Old Testament passages. And Jesus, here in this passage, announces even a good gift from God, a glimpse of a world where anger has no place. And he tells us if we live according to his teachings, Destructive relationships can't endure. We'll find our way to heal them. And then he sends us out into our human world of relationships to work on ourselves because we all need that. We all need guidance and to let God work within us according to the guidance of Christ as we follow his example so we can begin to fit into the kingdom of God ourselves. But it is hard. It is hard. Because this requires looking at ourselves and asking whether any of the life situations described in this passage apply to us. I won't ask for a show of hands, but I'll raise mine. I'll say that from my life experience, Yes, those, life ex those situations apply to us, all of us. 
I know that I need to keep working on all of those things because I'm somebody who gets angry pretty quickly. And then I cool off really fast too. <laughs> so by the time most people realize I'm angry, I'm over it and I've moved on and I'm trying to figure out why the person that made me angry thinks the way they do. But once in a while something happens that means I stay angry and I get stuck there too. And it's a struggle to figure out how to move beyond that. But Jesus was clearly saying in this passage, don't live with anger in your life for many reasons. First and foremost, for the state of our souls. In the very next chapter of Matthew, chapter 6, in 14 and 15 verses, he says, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That's pretty direct. This is tough love from God, inviting us to move beyond our anger and seek ways to stay in relationship with each other to look for some way to let go of what has come between us. Now the disciple, Peter, was struggling with this as much as we do. He asked Jesus how often we have to forgive someone who's wronged us and got the answer 70 times seven, symbolizing boundless forgiveness is needed. We shouldn't even be trying to keep track of counting that. But forgiving and moving beyond anger is no easy thing to do. Scripture tells us we need to do that, but not how to do it. And as the buttoned-down Midwesterners that most of us here are, most of us won't even admit when we're angry or speak why we're angry. But when that means we avoid dealing with something that's making us more upset and more upset and more upset, the first step is to acknowledge we're angry, to name it and claim it. Start with saying that to God in prayer and then inviting God to help us with that burden, to help us figure out what we're going to do with it so we're not on our own with it, so it's not us, just us working on it, and that makes us bitter. We need to find others to help us with it. We need to find safe places to speak what we're angry about, and I pray that the small groups of this faith community can become those safe places for processing and asking what's next and turning what troubles us over to God for transformation. Because most of the time we can't deal with these things going on inside by ourselves. We need our God's help and God's direction with what to do next. And then usually a next step is acknowledging that forgiving those who've made us angry is the best thing we can do for our souls and our relationship with God. Forgiving someone that's wronged us or our loved ones is no simple thing. And it will take considerable time and effort to work through spiritually. And it's also not easy to offer an apology when, we're re when we realize we're the ones in the wrong. I witnessed that this week when a young man who was part of the scout troops in our building was so angry when he got here, he lashed out. And then he was asked to apologize but he wasn't ready to do that because he was still so upset. We need to pray, especially for young people who are dealing with anger. And we need to ask God to help us to be good role models for how, how to handle that, how to handle the anger of our lives because that flares up in all of us. And no matter what age we are, apologizing to someone or receiving an apology and forgiving someone is no guarantee that reconciliation will happen between us. There's no guarantee that reconciliation can happen, that we're ready for that, but clearly Jesus wants that to be the end goal. 
He says that in this passage. He says that because he wants the best for us in our relationship with him and our relationship with one another. Apologizing and responding to an apology with forgiveness can truly transform the reality of our lives, making a burden that's weighed down our souls seem lighter and lighter until it leaves us completely. And losing that burden is a sign of our fully receiving God's grace given to us by what Jesus did with his life. Jesus had every reason to be angry at his disciples and stay angry at them. They didn't listen to him much of the time. They denied him and betrayed him. And that all led to his crucifixion. And yet he forgave them and he continued to love them. He responded to his disciples' mistakes with the grace of God, the grace God had placed within him. Jesus gave his disciples love and forgiveness they did nothing to deserve because that's God's grace. We do nothing to deserve the grace we receive from God. And Jesus gives us that example right in front of us. Now both our church here and the community that surrounds us are made up of fallible human beings. So we'll always need sermon topics of advice for how we're to live together, and they emerge from Scripture to help all of us. These are things we all need to work on all the time because there's no one here who doesn't need God's grace because there's no one here without sin. We walk together as a community who needs God's grace and receives it even though we do nothing to deserve it. We can have all kinds of things we say about our faith, but the reality of our faith shows up in our relationships in which we have a chance to offer one another God's grace, love and forgiveness. It sounds simple, but it takes the journey of a whole lifetime to figure out how we will receive God's grace and let it show up in our lives enough we're ready to offer it to others because that's what God intends. It's a gift we receive that we do nothing to deserve and we're simply asked to share it with others. God's grace is for all of us all of us here in this place, even when we get angry and we have the opportunity to move on and share that grace with whoever we're angry at. Amen. Amen. Let's find together a hymn that reflects this idea of sharing God's love and forgiveness in our lives. The gift of love is, pound, is found on page 408. Let's stand so we can sing together.
be seated now. As we come to the time in our service, we have opportunity to reflect on all the gifts God has given us in our lives and how we, with love, have opportunity to share those with the church to do God's work in the world around us. May our ushers please come forward as the chancel choir sings the Father's love. Blessed by musicians coming forward to help us sing Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. It's a tie that God makes between us as God's people all together. Let us do nothing to damage that tie God is trying to build between us. Let's stand and sing together.
friends, as we go from this place, may we walk as God's people, taking Jesus' advice for how we are to live together and care for one another. May that create ties between us that grow stronger from day to day. Amen. 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 Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>